Alpha 22 is seemingly just around the corner, and the news regarding the next huge update for 7 days is starting to roll in, so let's dive right into it. This update is all about the new character and armor system. The dated character models that have been present for about the past 8 years or so are finally gone, and soon servers will be packed with these brand new character designs. In the character creation process, you'll be able to select skin tone, hair, and face, but sliders to alter your character's body proportions will no longer be present. So basically, body types will be male and female, with no variability in height, weight, or build. To go along with the new look, we'll also see new animations. This is something that you'll probably only notice in multiplayer, but they do look a lot smoother. With the new characters, we'll also see the long-awaited introduction of new character armor sets. Perhaps as many as 15 of them, with more to be added in the future. Here are the confirmed sets so far. Nerd, Nomad, Lumberjack, Scavenger, Farmer, Commando, Assassin, Desert, Hoarder, Plant Fiber, Raider, Miner, and Heavy Iron Armor. And I have it on good authority that these will be divided into three armor classes, so we'll have Light and Heavy, but the addition of a third one, presumably some type of medium, super light or super heavy, or you know, something like that. And armor sets will now consist of four pieces, the head, chest, gloves, and leg pieces. And each will confer some type of bonus for wearing it. For example, you might wear these nerdy boots and discover that they increase your fall distance. You know, because they have springs in them, so. <laughs> They'll probably function about the same as if you're wearing the impact bracing mod that's currently available. Another example is that you might wear the lumberjack gloves and get a wood chopping bonus, and you know, so on. With as many as 60 individual armor pieces, it'll be interesting to see what bonuses are available and which ones are best for different builds. Now, if you're wearing the entire set, you'll get an additional bonus, much the same way that you get a bonus for reading a whole set of books, and there's a special perk at the end. So, sticking to a single armor theme could be more beneficial than a mix and match set. Speaking of mix and match, the sets are said to blend together seamlessly. Currently, there are some issues in the game when wearing certain combinations of clothing, but that should be resolved, and the player's hand in first-person view will reflect whatever glove type you're wearing. Zombies will now have variable outfits, at least most of them. This means that skin tone, hair, and the outfit color will vary. There should be two or three variations per zombie from what I've seen so far, but no new zombies have been reported. So we'll still be dealing with the same 30 or so. Then there's the new animals, each of them getting a new and improved model, and we've also been shown some work on new animations as well. I'm most excited for this new Grace. This ought to be fun to see in the wild. And finally, we'll see four brand new vehicles, except they're the same vehicles vehicles, they just <laughs> look different. Of course, vehicle mods will now be visible on the vehicles. For example, there's a bunch of different mods you can see here for the new 4x4. Functionally, I've not heard of any changes to how the vehicles work. Changes to the gyrocopter have not been mentioned, and still no word on a helicopter other than it's been, quote, discussed amongst the dev team. Not to mention there's a bunch of code for it in the game files already. Next up, we have several new POIs. Everything from new army camps to a new school, various commercial buildings, even a tier 5 football stadium has been reported. And there has also been mention of some, quote, trigger improvements, which basically means they're working on how, when, or where zombies will appear out of thin air. Hopefully, this will make stealth more viable on high tier quests. Random world generation will see additional improvements. It's said to perform better with less memory usage and faster generation times. Most notably to me is that roads can now carve through mountains, so you might see underground tunnels connecting cities together, kind of like the underground tunnel on the northern end of Navasgain. The burnt biome will return to random world gen. This was previously removed when it was reported that the burnt biome and the wasteland would someday be merged, which never happened. And the wasteland is said to now consistently occupy the center of the map with the other biomes surrounding it. And finally, we have a couple of interesting bits of information regarding some new graphics and visual effects. This new fire barrel might not seem exciting, but this is just a demonstration of new smoke and particle effects that should be present in things like campfires, molotovs, grenades, and even rocket blasts. There will also be new and improved dismemberment effects and new blood effects. There's a mod out there right now, actually, that adds blood effects, and I think it's really cool, so I am definitely excited for this one. There are a bunch of performance improvements 
improvements as well. Here's the official list. The only one I've seen firsthand is that things inside of buildings will no longer be rendered in unless you're close enough to them. As you can see here, the window is opaque from a distance and nothing inside is visible. But as I draw closer, I'll hit this threshold where the window becomes transparent and the stuff inside renders. Long story short, this should help when you're driving through a downtown area, for example, and the game engine doesn't have to load like 10,000 different props inside every single building that you drive past. Reportedly, this accounts for about a 5% improvement overall in frames per second. Along with some of the new graphic updates comes some new decal art. Most notably are the new newspapers laying around on the ground, which actually give a ton of new lore and backstory to the game. This newspaper here, dated December 5th, 2033, talks about the eventual 1.0 release of Seven Days to Die. No, I'm just kidding. It actually talks about the zombie virus spreading across the country, but so far, sparing Arizona, which is the setting for this game. The virus is being called the Septiurnal Virus, or SDV for short, and that's Latin for the Seven Days Virus. This here is the Duke, Duke Casador, the guy that the Duke casino tokens are named after, who is very outspoken about protecting Nava's gain by closing the border. He lashes out at public officials and vows to take matters into his own hands if necessary. The next paper, dated January 15th, 2034, or just about six weeks later, details plans to contain the virus with nukes and the military. The origin of the virus is not known, nor is Higashi Pharmaceuticals or Poppin' Pills mentioned, despite clues within the game that they might have been involved. There is an interesting mention of the well-known yet unusual seventh day red moon phenomenon in which the infected individuals become stronger than should scientifically be possible. Pretty neat stuff here if you ask me. Finally, there's the console update. Yes, it's real. I've played it myself and it actually runs surprisingly well. Are you going to be able to run 64 zombie horde nights on a 12k map? No. Consoles, even the modern ones, just can't seem to handle that kind of volume. So it will be released at about the same time as Alpha 22 on PS5 and Xbox Series X and S, and it will feature all of the Alpha 22 updates that we've reviewed so far. It will be an entirely new version of the game, so everyone who's already purchased Seven Days to Die on console just know that you currently own technically what will be a different version of the game. The new version will be called Seven Days to Die Apocalypse Edition. Now, the fun pimps have stated that they hope to be able to offer a discount on the new version to people who already own the old version, but honestly, I'm really not counting on this. They initially told me this in October of 2022 during my interview with Rick and Joel, and they told me the exact same thing in October of 2023 when I talked to them over at TwitchCon. So it's starting to sound like lip service to me. And uh, still no word on crossplay yet. I think this either fell through or was never actually viable. No official word on that yet. And that's it. So if you're wondering what I think about all of this, well, I'm happy. It seems like it'll be a fun update, but I'm also a little bit disappointed. Considering we're pushing one year of development for Alpha 21, I was really hoping to see a little bit more. It feels like, um, it feels like everything will just play the same, but look slightly different, which I guess could be a good thing. I mean, there aren't any massive gameplay overalls this time around, like, you know, magazines or the water rework. Anyway, you know, we'll see how it all plays out and I'll reserve judgment uh, on these little individual things until I get a chance to try it out in the game. I just, I don't think it's fair to judge things based on, you know, limited information that we have so far. So anyway, thank you very much for tuning into this update video. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Subscribe for full Alpha 22 coverage up to and through release. And don't forget to leave a like if you found this information helpful. Anyway, my friends, Hopefully, I will see you in the next one. Hey everyone, I just wanted to say thank you for watching, for leaving a like, but most of all, thank you to the long list of amazing supporters that you see right here. I hope this episode has earned your subscription, and I can't wait to show you the next one. Best wishes to all, and goodbye.